Welcome back to Scandinavian Cookbook. I'm Sylvia and today I am making skulabra or Norwegian school bread. We also call these skulabolid or school buns. These are sweet cardamom buns with vanilla custard in the center and then they're topped with icing and dipped in shredded coconut. These are a favorite amongst Norwegian children. I have loved these since I was a little girl but of course adults love them too. My first job in Norway was working in a supermarket and I mostly worked in the baking section and I would make these buns there and I would always try to mess one up so that I could secretly eat it. I don't, that wasn't really allowed, but I did it anyway. I shared my recipe for these on my website, scandinaviancookbook.com, a couple years ago, and I've gotten so many comments from people saying that they discovered school bread in Disney World. And I've never had the Disney school bread, but they say that this tastes just as good, or some people said it was better. And I think that's so fun that people are getting introduced to our Norwegian baked goods in Disney World in the US. How cool. The recipe for these might look intimidating because there are several steps, but they're actually quite easy to make. And I've given you some tips, so I think that this recipe is really foolproof now if you follow all of my tips carefully. I am linking the recipe in the description box below. And while you're there, click subscribe for more Scandinavian recipes. I'll be kneading the dough by hand, so I'm using lukewarm milk, but if you're using a mixer to knead the dough, you can actually use cold milk because the dough will heat up a lot in the mixer. This time I'm using instant yeast, but sometimes I also make it with fresh yeast, which is quite common in Norway. I don't think it's as common in the US and some other countries, but instant yeast works totally fine here. use pre-ground cardamom if you must but I really recommend grinding your own cardamom seeds because you'll get so much flavor that way I've heard that pre-ground cardamom they just grind the whole pod and that's why it's not as flavorful I'm not sure if that's true but at any rate it's definitely not as flavorful if you do need to use pre-ground I would maybe double the amount even then you're not gonna get quite as much flavor as you would from grinding your own seeds I use seeds from green cardamom pods. In Norway, we can just buy this at the supermarket. But if your supermarket doesn't have it, you can probably find it at more specialty shops. Maybe Asian food stores have them. And then just grind the seeds in a mortar and pestle until you have quite a fine powder. <laughs> either vanilla extract or vanilla sugar for this. Vanilla sugar is more common in Norway, but vanilla extract will work too. I try to add the flour slowly. I add about two thirds of it first and then really mix it in with the wet ingredients. And then I slowly add the rest because the amount you need can vary a little bit. You don't want the dough to be too sticky to knead, of course but you also don't want to add too much flour. You basically want just enough flour that you're able to knead the dough. And it is around five cups, but it can vary, vary a bit. Or you can measure the flour in grams, and that tends to be a bit more exact and more foolproof. That is what I usually do. But if you don't have a scale, you can use cups. So now I've added four cups of flour to the dough and I'm going to be a bit careful while adding the final cup. And then you also can save some for spreading across your counter for when you need the dough. Or you can add some more if you need. If you need. And now I'm ready to knead the dough. So I'm just going to spread a little bit of flour on the counter and see if I need to add some more flour to the dough as I'm kneading it. And once the dough comes together in a nice ball, I knead it for a couple of minutes, and then I'm gonna add the softened butter. 
It is quite messy to add the butter at this point, but it's better for the gluten to wait to add it. So if you really hate the slimy feeling of kneading butter into the dough, you can add the butter earlier on before you add the flour. But if you want the best result, the best texture of bun, you should add the butter now. But this is quite slimy. But the nice thing about adding the butter at this point is that the dough really won't be sticky now because there's so much fat on your hands. So it's kind of easier to knead. And then you're gonna continue kneading the dough for about 10 minutes until it's nice and elastic. So I like to put on some music or a podcast and just enjoy the process. Okay, now we have a beautiful dough. I am going to put it back in the mixing bowl to rise until it's doubled in size, which takes about an hour. And that's actually kind of bad news for this video because there's not very much daylight here in Norway now that it's almost December, so I'm gonna have to figure out some lighting <laughs> for after the dough is ready, but I will figure that out. I've got an hour to make it work. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the vanilla custard immediately while the dough is rising. Take advantage of the little light I have left here. And if you've never made vanilla custard before, it can be a bit intimidating, I guess. I know some people prefer to use ready-made vanilla pudding for their the center of their school of bullet. But I actually think it's not that difficult to make the custard. I think it's worth making on your own. I think it's more delicious than pre-made pudding or custard. You're gonna start with heating up your milk and half of the sugar in a saucepan. And you're also going to use the seeds from a vanilla pod. This is kind of interesting if you've never done this before. You just split this open and then scrape the seeds out. If you don't have a vanilla pod, I think you probably could just use vanilla extract. Maybe I'd try a couple teaspoons of vanilla extract instead. I've never done it with vanilla extract, but that's my guess. Uh, but it is worth using a vanilla pot if you can get your hands on one. We have these just at the supermarket. I imagine it's the same other places too. So you're just gonna slice the pod down the center to open it up. It does have quite a strong smell. It can be a bit sticky when you open it up. And then you're gonna gently scrape out the seeds. Don't scrape too hard because you don't want to get the rest of the pod as you're scraping. You just want the seeds. Just get as many seeds as you can. It should be enough. And this is gonna add such a nice flavor to the custard. And also you're gonna be able to see the little black seeds in the custard, which is really nice. Okay, and then I'm just gonna scrape the seeds out the other side. Okay, so I've just stirred in the seeds and now I'm gonna heat this up until it begins to bubble. And then in another mixing bowl, I'm going to add three egg yolks and one egg. So you can add some egg whites to an omelet tomorrow morning for breakfast. Just gonna separate these. eggs together with the rest of the sugar and then whisk in the flour and the cornstarch and whisk this all until it's nice and smooth and then we're just waiting for the milk to begin to bubble once the milk bubbles we'll be moving quite quickly you're going to take your saucepan and pour about half of the milk into this mixture, whisking the entire time. And then we're gonna return the saucepan to the heat and pour all of this into the saucepan, again, whisking the entire time. And we're gonna let it cook for two minutes, continuing to whisk the whole time. By the end, it will be quite difficult to whisk because it'll be getting thicker. Okay. 
And now we're going to pour the custard into a clean bowl and cover and let it cool in the fridge. This does make a bit more custard than you will need for the buns, but the custard also tastes delicious. I will happily eat it on its own or with berries. It's, yeah, a nice little extra dessert you get when making school of olive. You're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and let the plastic actually touch the top of the custard. That way you won't get a hard shell on top when it's cooling. And I just let this cool in the fridge until I'm ready to pipe it into the buns. Okay, now the dough is finished rising. We are going to roll it into a cylinder and slice it into buns. This recipe makes about 12 buns, but those are quite large buns. So if you want smaller buns, you could slice the dough into 15 buns, 16 buns. Uh, but I usually do around 12, so they're quite large. And then we're going to form the buns into nice round balls and space them evenly on two baking sheets lined with baking paper. You do want plenty of space between each bun because these are going to rise again and puff up a bit in the oven as well. Okay, now we are going to make a well in the middle of each bun where we can put the vanilla custard. This is the one step that I see people mess up the most often. You have to make this well a lot bigger than you think and really push down to the bottom of the bun. You don't want to make a full hole in the bun. You do want the dough to stretch across the bottom of the bun still, but you want a nice deep well. This is because the buns will rise and puff up in the oven and you don't want the custard to just puff right out of the bun. So you need plenty of space for this custard, more space than you think you need. If you're imagining a ready-made scolabra, you might think, okay, it's about this size, but make it bigger. I use the back of a measuring spoon, this is a tablespoon, to make the well. You can use your fingers. Uh, yeah, use whatever, whatever you need, but I start with the measuring spoon, and then I use my fingers to really make the well bigger. You want lots of space and push down down to the bottom of the bun. Especially if you like the vanilla custard, you want to be able to fit a lot of custard in the bun. And now we've made our wells, we're gonna fill each bun with the vanilla custard. I like to do this with a piping bag, I just find it easier that way. But if you don't have a piping bag, you can also just spoon in the custard, that works fine too. Just any way to get the custard in there. Now we're gonna cover the buns and let them rise again for 30 minutes before brushing them with egg wash and putting them in the oven. Now these are ready to go in the oven for about 10 to 14 minutes. Start with 10. You never want to over bake your buns because then they can dry out. So start with 10 minutes and if they're still looking pale, you can bake them for another minute or two, but they should be a nice golden brown when they are finished. Now that the buns have cooled a bit, we can start decorating them. You don't have to wait until the buns are completely cool. It's actually a bit easier to decorate them when they're still kind of warm because then the icing will spread across them more easily. So yeah, I wait until they're just cool enough that I can hold them comfortably. So I spread the icing around the top half of the bun and then I take it and I just dunk it in the coconut. So the coconut's gonna stick to the icing and it won't stick to the custard center so you don't have to worry about that. I just roll it around a bit to make sure that everything is covered in coconut. 
that's nice. And then shake off the coconut of it, and there you have your skulabra.